Hello and welcome to Code at Home episode eight, episode eight with me, DJ. Uh, really glad you could join again. Uh, welcome. If you're joining for the first time, extra special welcome. If you're joining uh, again from previous episodes, also an extra special welcome. Everybody gets an extra special welcome today. Uh, so yeah, it's Monday afternoon here in the UK. And uh, here in the UK, it's uh, Easter Monday, a public holiday, but uh, you know, that doesn't mean to say that, uh, you know, anything's different. We're still uh, staying at home and hopefully staying safe as well. Uh, let me just, just I've just remembered I need to share my screen as well. What a, what a, what a fool. There we go. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you could join. So um, where did we le leave off on Friday and what do we want to cover today? Well, I'll tell you about that shortly before I do. For the parents watching, um, I've got uh, a URL at the bottom of the screen here. There we go. Along there, bit.ly, code at home, same as usual, always the same URL. That will take you to a blog post with all sorts of information about what this is, about who I am, about the episodes, sort of the past episodes and so on, and how to get the recordings. And also, it's got an email address. Uh, in there that you can contact me at any time during the live streams, in between live streams. Um, and, you know, I will try and answer any question you have for me. So please don't uh, don't be shy. Uh, don't hold back on asking any questions. OK, so this episode is episode eight. And the title of the episode is Finishing Off Sort and Introducing Objects. Now, I'm just going to move my, my little video. Uh, with my magic button to the top of the screen. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, is that working there? That's uh, what's going on here. Oh, I just need to unlock this. Uh, oh, I'm not very well prepared today, am I? What's going on? Mind you, I suppose it is Easter Monday, so uh, you know this is real life. Select screen share. Uh, I'll select that screen. There we go. Okay, fine. Hopefully that should be okay. So where we left off last week. Uh, last Friday was we had pretty much understood, hopefully, what the compare function uh, was doing for us and how we could use a specific compare function to influence the behavior of the sort function, the sort array function. Okay, And this is what we had last time. This is the code at home seven. So what I suggest we all do. This, if you go to REPL it, REPL it, R E P L dot I T at slash at Q macro slash at code at home seven, which was the REPL from last Friday. And then here where it says invite on my screen, you should see a button that says fork and you can create a copy of it. So I'm going to do that as well, but I've got to go back and go into my REPLs. And look at code at home, for example. There we go. And I'm going to do it here, right? Uh, you can do it with the big button at the top. And it's called it code at home 7 1, but I'm going to rename it code at home 8. Okay, same procedure, just like every time. So there we go. Um, interestingly enough, it's given me the, uh, the REPL at the bottom here. So I'm going to go across to the settings as we've done before, and choose not the stacked layout, but the side-by-side -side layout. So it's on the on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to close that little settings dialog box here, this column, by cl clicking that again. OK, so we've got now a copy, a new copy of uh, what we had last Friday. Let's just remind ourselves um, of what it was doing. We had a function that we defined called randoms. And that function took two parameters. N, as in how many random numbers it was to give back, and also the max parameter with a default of 10 if we didn't specify it, and that controlled how big those random numbers were between one and, in the case of this default here, if we don't pass that value, 10. We don't want this one, we can, we can remove that. So you can also remove that, const numbers equals randoms. That's just to generate a list of random numbers. And the numeric, we may need that. So let's just uh, not look at that. Let's close that up for now. Use that contract little button there, that square with the minus sign on. Just sort of, you know, get keep it out of the way. Okay. 
in fact why don't we why don't we be good coders and put a little comment as to what that does so again when we look at it uh, we can we can sort of have an idea of or remember what it does so i'm going to put a comment in there uh compare if i could type compare function uh numerical order ascending as well going up so the lowest comes first okay now we've got a comment we can close that up and we sort of know what's going on okay so i'm going to give you, give you a couple of seconds to to catch up there so hopefully you've been, been able to fork that code at home seven and now you've got a code at home eight or whatever you want to call your REPL. and uh if you've removed that const nums equals randoms whatever it was 520 if, if you haven't removed it that's okay i'm just all i'm doing is removing it so we've got a little bit more space to work with so let's run it okay so now we've got this randoms function i'm going to type the randoms function name in and yes, we know it's a function. And also, if we type in numeric, it tells us also that's a function. Okay, we're we're fairly happy with that. If we if we ask the randoms function for I don't know five random numbers, and it's going to be between one and ten because we're going to take the default max of ten. There we go. That's fine. Okay, so far so good. Now we've been playing around the last couple of episodes with these nice arrays of random numbers okay and um, prior to that we've also had arrays of strings so each element in the array was a string let's say and you don't have to type this in i'm just going to type it into the REPL just for illustration purposes get a bit of water there if we have for example a string the quick brown fox i'll just leave it at that dot split on a space remember we're using the split string function passing that function uh, split function the space character to say split every time there's a space and that will give us an array as well but in that array we've not got numbers like this one we've got strings so the question is you know is that all we can do with arrays what would it be possible i wonder to have an array with different types of values with strings and numbers well in javascript in our language that we're using we can there are other languages that uh, are a bit more restrictive and only allow you to have the same type of value in any given array Okay, so these two arrays right now, they would be okay. But in JavaScript, the language we're using, you can have an array with all sorts of different types of values in there. You could have an array, let's, I'm just gonna make one up. Um, here's my name, DJ, comma, Adams, comma, and then my favorite number, 42. There we go, and we can have that as an array. So notice there, it's not all numbers, it's not all strings. We've got different types of values. Now, can we go even more interesting than that? Well, I think we can. What happens if, say, for some strange reason, we wanted to generate some random numbers, course we've got that randoms function but we wanted to generate more than one list of random numbers and then do something with that list or that multiple list of lists now let me say that again can you have a list of random numbers and another list of random numbers and another list of random numbers and assign all those three lists to one constant or one variable and the answer is yes because in JavaScript, like many other programming languages as well, you can have lists of numbers, lists of strings, lists of numbers or strings or any other type. But of course, an array is also a type. So you can have 
if you wanted to, a list of lists. So I'm going to type one out first of all, and then we'll generate one. OK, so let's say here's our here's the start of our list. And the first element in that list, in that array, is another list. So we open up another bracket. And why don't we say we'll have one, two, three in that list. And then I'm going to have another list. Let's say I want to have, for example, my three favorite numbers, 3, 42, and 99. I'm sort of making that up, but there we go. Don't worry about that whether you have to put spaces in or not. It doesn't really matter. And as, finally, I'm going to have a list of very large numbers. That's quite big. That's quite big as well. And 9999. That's a large number. Okay, so let me just move that across so we can see it all on one line. And now, finally, there's the end of the outer list. So let's just stare at that for a second. We've got this list here, all this array. Okay, open, open square brackets, blah, close square brackets. And how many elements have we got in that array? We've got three elements, three things. There's one thing. There's the first thing. There's the second thing. And there's the third thing. But each of those things, what are they? They're not strings, they're not numbers. They are themselves also lists, arrays. Let's press enter and make sure that the REPL is sort of happy with what we've, you know, just expressed. Yeah, it's recognized it. Otherwise it would have given us an error, okay? So we can have lists of lists. And you might see when you come across it, when you're reading about this, you might see that this array is called the outer array because it's sort of outside. And these arrays are the inner arrays because they're inside. Now let's sort of see that. Let's generate one of those for ourselves so we can sort of see that more in action. Why, do, why, why don't we create a list of lists of random numbers. Let's say const uh, lists, lists, that'll do, const lists equals, and we'll assign the empty list, we'll assign an array basically, to the lists constant. And now we can say lists.push randoms, and we'll have five in there, first of all, so what we're doing here is we're calling the randoms function, passing five to the randoms function, saying, give me five random numbers. What does the randoms function produce? It produces a list, an array. When I say the word list here, and when I say the word array, they're the same thing. So the randoms function will return an array, and that gets pushed into our lists constant, which itself, of course, is an array. Otherwise, we wouldn't be trying to use the dot push function on it, would we? So let's do that. One. What could that mean? Well, if you remember one of the episodes, we saw something like that. What push returns as its result, as it were, is the number of elements in whatever it's pushed to right now. So the list was empty. We've now pushed one thing onto it, which was that list of random numbers. And so there's one element. If we do that again, we get two. Now, let's have a look inside of lists. Let's just type the lists constant into the REPL to get the REPL to show us what it is. There we go. We've got an array of arrays. We've got a, a list of two lists of random numbers. Probably not very useful, but there's a question. Is there another type of structure, of data structure in JavaScript and in other programming languages as well, that's as useful, if not more useful, than arrays? Arrays are super useful, as we've seen already. Okay, lists, lists of things. 
But there's another structure type, data type, called an object. Some people call it a map. I call it a map as well sometimes. But let's use the word object for now, even though that word is a little bit generic, a little bit sort of general. But before we have a look what an object is and how it feels, I want to just take a slight digression and start looking at the problem on the Project Euler site that we're going to look at next. Okay. If you go to projecteuler.net slash problem equals 22, if you just go to Project Euler.net, just like that. Go into the archives and you'll see that together already we've solved problem one, problem two, there's a tick there, tick, and problem four. I'm going to jump right down now to problem 22. Not because I don't like the other problems in between, but I think this is quite a nice little problem that will allow us to use our newfound skills in coding relating to, for example, lists and strings and sorting and all that sort of thing. Even look, even char code at, if you, if you read that really quickly, you'll think, oh, yeah, OK. Let's read this problem together and then we'll sort of put that in the back of our minds and let the let the other part of our brain start thinking about that in the background. OK, and then we'll move back quickly to finish off sorting. OK. And start looking at objects. Names scores. This is the name of the problem. This is the title of the problem. Names scores. Scores of names. And of course, for those sharp and wondering of course that could theoretically mean lots of names scores of 20 score is a very old word for 20 so and now nowadays scores scores of things that means lots of things so it could mean scores of names but it doesn't it means let's just add up some scores for some names I probably confused you more than I helped you there on that little uh, digression, but there we go. It's a Monday afternoon on a bank holiday, so, you know, we're allowed to be a bit confused. So, using names.text, okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Using names.text, a 46 kilobyte, okay, text file containing over 5,000 first names, begin by sorting it into alphabetical order. Okay, we're already thinking, great. These names, these are gonna be strings, and we know how, you know, we know how to handle strings, and we know how to sort as well. And we also know that the default behavior of the sort array function is to sort things in alphabetical order. Great. Okay, so we're feeling quite, quite comfortable, quite confident already, which is great. Then, working out the alphabetical value for each name, multiply this value by its alphabetical position in the list to obtain a name score. Goodness me. That's a, a long sentence. <laughs> Let's go through that again. Working out the alphabetical value for each name. Well, it shows us down here, for example, when the list is sorted into alphabetical order, Colin, the name Colin, which is worth, okay, this is the alphabetical value, which is worth 3 plus 15 plus 12 plus 9 plus 14 equals 53. So the alphabetical value of Colin is 53. Do you see what it did? C is the third letter of the alphabet, so that's worth three points. O is the 15th letter of the alphabet, so it's worth 15 points. L, 12, I, 9, and N, 14. So you take the position of each of the letters, in the name, where those position, where those letters are in the alphabet, those are the individual letter scores. Add them all up, you get a, uh, an alphabetical value, which is 53. Colin itself is, is 938 in the big list of names. So you multiply 53 
buy 938 and get a final score for that Colin name there in the list of 49,714, okay? So we also know, even though we haven't done it explicitly together, we, we've got a good idea of how we would calculate that C, for example, is worth three points. And O, for example, is worth 15 points. Do you remember what that function might be to allow us to work that out. Have a think about that between now and Wednesday, which is going to be the next episode. I'm just going to shut this door. One second. There we go. Okay. There's also some sorting involved, which is quite exciting. Now, let's go back to this thing here using names.txt. Now, that tells me already as a coder, hmm, that's probably a file. That's probably a file name.txt is a text file and you can see the clue here right click and save link target as so right click on here save link as now you don't have to do that right now we can just click on this because we're not going to be doing this problem yet but let's have a look at the the list of first names 5000 first names let's let's see what sort of format it is we'll click on it oh my goodness me That's crazy. Wow, that's a lot of names. And can you see how that set of names is formatted, how it's presented to us? It's presented to us where each name is in double quotes, like Linda there. And also each name is separated from the next name by a comma. If I can highlight properly, there, a comma. So already maybe you're thinking about, hmm, how do I get each individual name? Let's forget about the double quotes for now. Have a think what function we might use because this, this, this thing in the file here, the whole thing, right down to the bottom that is one single huge string okay so have to think about how you might get individual names from that string have a think about what sort of structure you'd put those names into and so on okay Let's leave that there because we'll also be using sort. So that reminds me to finish off sort. Now, last Friday, we used this. Let's just close that up because we know what randoms does for us. Last Friday, we used this function as a compare function that we passed to the sort array function to influence the behavior of the sort function so that it sorted the contents of an array numerically. So let's say if we have, for example, um, randoms, well, let's, let's say let uh, r equals randoms and we'll have 10, okay, between 1 and 10. There we go. There's our randoms. R dot sort. I'm not sure why it's printing it on two lines, but there we go. R dot sort. Okay, we know that that's not what we want. So if we say R dot sort and then pass it the name of this numeric function here, it will sort it for us properly. One, two, three, three, four, five, six, eight, eight, ten. Great. Okay. So we've used this compare function to influence the behavior of the sort function. Okay. All good. 
Now, that seems a little bit of an overkill, a little bit over-designed that we have to specify a, a, a compare function for the sort function just for this sort of scenario, this sort of context where you want to sort things numerically. Why else or in what other context might you want to have a compare function? Because the numeric example is a good example. But can you think of any other examples of where you'd want to have some very specific sort behavior if the default sort behavior wasn't what you wanted? Well, that is a good time for us to start thinking about this other data structure. Okay, that's even more interesting and even more useful than all the data structures we've seen so far. So we've seen so far numbers. We've seen strings. We've seen arrays. We've also seen arrays where the individual elements are of different types, numbers and strings. We've even seen now arrays of arrays. And of course, as you can imagine, you can have as complex a nested structure, things inside other things, as you want to with arrays. So there, that's crazy, but there we've got an array that has only two elements. There's the first element, which is itself an array of just three single scalar values, numbers. And then the second element is that array there, but that array is a bit more interesting. That array, the first element's a number, the second element's a string, and the third element is an array so on you can go down and down and down and down and down into the nest 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 as far as you want now managing data like this in terms of lists and lists of lists and lists of lists of lists is all well and good but sometimes you want to have a little bit more control and a little bit more structure and that is where this new type of data structure comes in. That's where this data structure that I've called an object comes in. Now, I'm gonna introduce the object by just typing one out. Now, when we typed out a number, we just put the number in and that was it, just up here, look. When we typed out a string, when we defined a string, we put it in single quotes. Oh, you can use double quotes as well, it doesn't matter. When we typed out an array, we put it in square brackets. When we type out an object, when we declare an object, liter a literal object, we start it with not open square brackets, but open curly brackets. Okay, we've seen open curly brackets before, haven't we? We've seen open curly brackets to introduce a block of code Like there, or even, sorry, not there, there, or there, or even the outer block, which is there. We've also seen it when we're injecting values from variables into, into backtick strings here. So the curly bracket, or the curly brace, as some people call it, I call it that as well, is used in lots of different areas. In JavaScript, there's only there's only so many keys on your keyboard, so you know it gets reused. So here we can say, for example, right, I would like to declare literally a new object. I want to type it in, and I'm going to say name DJ. My favorite number. I'm just going to call it num for now. Forty-two. Now. 
let's just clear the screen before I press enter and let's press enter. So first of all, we'll dig into all the syntax of this object literal in a minute. So first of all, we know that what I've typed in is valid JavaScript. Java, the, the JavaScript interpreter in the form of the REPL here has said, okay, yeah, fine. Okay, and I'll print it out for you. And it's color coded it for us as well, which also is a clue that, you know, it's recognized it. But instead of just a list of things where, you know, we have to remember, let's say we had a, something that meant something specific to us, and that was always in the second position in the array, the second element. Okay, but we had to remember that, didn't we? Here, we don't have to remember what position something is in this in a list in our array. We can just we can give it a so-called property name. Okay, so each of these things here, that thing, and that thing are properties. Okay. So this property, the property name is name as a in fact that, that's a silly example let me just do one one more um first uh name first name dj num 42 there we go okay so this property here the property name is first name and the property value the value of that property is the string dj this property, the property name is num, and the property value is the integer, the number 42. Now, that might not seem very exciting right now, but let's say we assign something assign one of these objects. In fact, if you want to do this as well, you can. You, you might be playing along anyway. So if you go into the REPL and type in const, um, let's call it, let's call it uh, info. Okay, I want you to type this in as well, into the REPL, const info, like information, equals, and what are, we, what are we going to assign to the info constant? Well, open curly brackets. So we're going to assign an object. First name. So the property name is first name. And note that first name is not in quotes. Okay. We can sort of tell from that that it's not a string. It's a property name. And then it's then there's a colon. You can have a, you can have a, a space before the colon if you wanted to. But I like not to have a space before it, but to have a space after it. And then open single quotes and then put your name. I'm going to put my name and close quotes. And then a comma. And now we're going to put the second property. Uh, num, favorite number. So the property name is num. And then a colon to sort of, you know, join the property name with the property value that we're going to specify now, which is well, my favorite number, 42. And then I'm going to finish off declaring that object literal by closing the curly bracket, the curly brace. So I'm going to press enter. You should press enter too. And we should get undefined because, you know, we it hasn't really calculated anything for us. It said, OK, fine. But now... If you type in info, we get what we typed in, but it's nicely color coded, of course, in the REPL here. So now how do we get to these individual properties? We've got this info object. So we've got this info constant, that the value of which is not this object. If we wanted to print out on the console what our favorite number was, how do we get to this property here? Well, it's quite easy. Info dot, you guessed it, num, 42. 
If we wanted to get to the first name, of course, then it's going to be, I'm going to press the up arrow to get that there, info dot first name, DJ. Not only can we do that, what happens if we said info dot fruit? Is fruit a property that exists already? No. Let's see what it tells us. The value of the fruit property in this info object, which is a you know, info const constant, which is an object, is undefined. It's not defined. It's okay. That's sort of okay. In other languages, it wouldn't be okay, but you know, we're here with JavaScript at the moment. But we can go even further than that. We can say info dot fruit equals, and don't forget this is the single equal sign, which is the assignment operator, as in assign this value to this, not the triple equal signs sign, which is the equality operator. Is this equal to this? We can say, well, you guess what? You can guess what I'm going to type for my fruit. Oops, banana, what's gonna happen? Banana, but what's happened in the background? What's become of our info constant? What's become of the object that's assigned to info? Let's have a look, type in info. We've now got a third property. The property name is fruit, and the property value is banana. Great, we can do all sorts of things. Let's say we didn't want just a single favorite number. I've got, let's say I've got three favorite numbers. I'm just sort of gonna make them up. It doesn't really matter, favorite numbers. But let's say I've got three favorite numbers. So I want to not have a single integer, a single number as the value of this num property, but I want to have an array, just like we can have an array as a single element of an outer array. We can say info.num or yeah, info.num equals Three, 42, and 99. Those are my three favorite numbers right now. So we're assigning this array literal here with three elements in it, a three, a 42, and a 99, three numbers. And we're assigning that as the, the new value, which will replace whatever was in that num property before. Let's see what happens. Okay, it said, just like it told us banana before, it's now saying, oh yeah, 342.99, that array. Okay, fine. Let's have a look what's in info now. Are we getting there? So you can almost see now already that objects are super useful because we can give names to individual values. So it makes things more meaningful. We can even, Well, not even, we can we can do all the expected things on these individual properties as well. So let's say, and I'm gonna clear the screen and just up arrow again, just to look at info again, so we can just have it at the top of the screen. Let's say I decided I've, I've suddenly got a, a new fourth favorite number and that number is 500. So I want to push that new 500 value onto the end of the array there, onto the end of this array here, which is the value of the num property. How would we do that? Well, I think you can probably guess, can't you? Info dot num, if I press enter, it'll give me the actual value, but info dot num is an array. So we can call the array function, push onto it, and push 500 onto the num property 
which is an array, of the info object. And I think by now you can work out why it tells us four as the result of that operation, because the new length of the array, which is assigned to the num property of the info object, is four. There we go. Great. Now, I've got something for you to copy paste now because we can have a little bit more of an interesting bit of data to play around with. OK, it's not that much more interesting, but it's maybe better than this. And then we'll circle round onto the sort array function and the compare functions that we, we, we can define for that. And we can see then hopefully how useful it is to be able to define your own sort behavior. OK. So now. If you go to a new open up a new browser tab. OK, I've done it already here. And in fact. Into the browser tab, I want you to type gist, it's a strange word, G-I-S-T dot github dot com. OK, GitHub is uh, a site where you can store and manage source code and data and all sorts of different things. So gist or gist, I think I think most people pronounce it gist. Like in, you know, oh, I think I've got the gist of this. Gist.github.com. Um, I think, yes, and then slash Q macro. That's me. So we've all got all got that. Gist.github.com slash Q macro. That's me. That's me. Goodness me. It's a funny picture. But anyway, the first one in the list here, Q macro episodes dash a dot js, click on that. And I've got three examples of data. There's the first one, episodes-a.js. There's the second one, episodes-b.js. And there's the third one, episodes-c.js. You guessed it, C .js. And that's it. So. First of all, ignore the B and the C and just go for A just here where you can see all this code here. And I want you to copy all of this and we're going to paste it into the REPL. But the easiest way to copy it is actually to click on this raw button here. Give me it in raw. Don't try and format it nicely for me. Just give me in raw format. Click on raw. And it will just give us the code with nothing else on the page. So we can just hit Control A or Command A on a, an Apple computer. And then Control C or Command C to copy. Or you can also do right click, I think. Uh, or maybe you can't do that. Mm, no, maybe you can't do that. So Control A or just highlight everything. Then copy. Right click and copy or just hit Control C or Command C on an Apple computer. Go back over to your REPL. Go to the bottom, first of all, and just paste it in. So right, uh, I think, can we paste? No. And then press Control V or Command V and paste it in. Now, did you get that? So now what we should have it's quite a lot of code in here. Let's clear this up a bit. We don't need this numeric function for now. So we'll just collapse that for now. So what we should have is at the top, our randoms function collapsed. Our numeric function collapsed. And now the thing that we've just grabbed from this gist here, which is all of that, And that's what it looks like. Const episodes equals now. 
I guess we all recognize what these episodes are referring to. They're referring to the code at, this Code at Home series, aren't they? Okay, our Code at Home series. And can you see what type of structure we've got here? So the episode's constant. I'm just distracted by a beautiful bird over there that's trying to fly in through the window and the window's closed. What are you trying to do? Can I learn some JavaScript? No, it's gone now. So this open square brackets tells us that the episode's constant is an array, but what are the elements in that array? Each element separated by the separated by a comma here. Each element is what? Each element is an object. There's the first object. There's the second object. There's the third object and so on. So, if we now, I'm just gonna move that across again, that, that'll wrap round nicely. And can you see each object looks the same, has the same structure, it's got the same two property names, the episode number and the episode title. So let's run that. Okay, have you all got that by the way? Hopefully you've all got that. If we now just type in the name of that constant into the REPL, Let's do that. I'll just move that across and do it again so it doesn't wrap around. We get a beautiful printout, just like we got a beautiful, beautiful printout before of our simple test structure. So we've now got an array of objects, a list of objects. So can you see how whatever you're going to be coding in the future, this sort of structure could be quite useful. Now, let's say for some strange reason, I wanted that list of episodes, but I wanted it sorted, okay? I wanted it sorted, let's say I want it sorted, not by maybe the episode number, okay, but, by the episode title. So how do we do that? Because if we say episodes.sort, you know, the behavior, behavior of the sort is sort of not really what we want because what the sort function is doing is trying to compare and we know this now of course because we know that first of all it says well you know is this one bigger than this one now can you tell me is that object bigger or smaller than that object and of course i don't mean the length of it right i think the only answer to that sort of question is banana it, the question doesn't make sense how can you compare something that has a structure like that? What we really need to do, of course, is to compare values of individual properties. So in our case, what we want to do is sort by the title property. So we want these strings here being the strings that are compared alphabetically so that when we sort that ascending by the title what's the first one that should come out in the alphabetical order um, i think it's going to be uh this one figuring out sentence statistics because f is the first letter in these first letters here f s F, S, and so on. There's another F there, but that goes F, I, Z. Okay, so F, I, G comes before F, I, Z when we sort. So 
what we want to do is sort these episodes so that episode number four is the first one because the title figuring out sentence statistics is alphabetically the first one and so on so how do we do that well this is why the compare function the ability to pass a function a compare function to the sort function like we did before this is why it's so much more important than being able to influence just say the you know the, the type of order whether it's numeric or alphanumeric or alpha or string or whatever you want to call it so in the last 10 minutes what we'll do is we'll in fact have a little bit more yeah well no what we'll do is we'll, we'll write a sort compare function so that it will sort this list of episode objects by the title property. Okay, so now, if we have a look at the episodes, how do we get to the episode titles? Well, of course, let's say, and we all know this, we should know this by now, shouldn't we? Let's say we want the title, we just want to print out the title of the second episode in this list, so first of all, we know that this is an array, don't we? So how do we get to this second element of the array? Remember, we can put an index number. Let's put the second number two for the second element. Is that going to be the right one? No, of course not. We know that in JavaScript indexes, or sorry, in JavaScript arrays, are zero indexed. So that means that even though that episode number, you know, for us humans, that's episode number one, this here is the, and this sounds a bit of a strange thing to say, but is the zeroth element of the array. So if that's the zeroth, that's going to be the first, isn't it? So There we go. Now, that just gives us the entire value of that array element with index one. But we want just the value of the title property. So remember how we did that before with the dot? Now we've got the object. We can just say episodes index one dot because we're already at this stage we're already at this stage dealing with an object so we know we can get to an object's property just by putting the property name after a dot dot title there we go for those watching who have seen a different way of getting to a specific property in an object like this don't worry we're going to come to that but not today right so let's get back to where we were there's our episode with index one and there's our title so now we know how to get to the value of the title property in a given object element of an array. So with that in mind, let's just collapse this episodes and write a new compare function. Let's call it const by, by title. OK, and I'm using this sort of, you know, capital T there so we can sort of easily read it from an English perspective, from a human perspective. And we're just going to define it just like we define the other numeric compare function. In other words, it takes two. In fact, let's bring that up for us. It takes two parameters, A and B. And remember. Why don't we just copy this actually? Um, 
No, let's just stare at this for a second and then we'll type it out together. Okay. So this is a compare function. So we know that the sort function is going to call it. When it calls it, it's going to pass it. two of the elements to compare. And why don't we do the following? A, B. Let's just see what sort does, what sort is passing when we call it with the by title compare function. Then we'll just return, let's just return zero, as in every time we're asked. In fact, no. Let's just return undefined. We don't even have to type that. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so now let's run that. So we've got the by title. There's our episodes. Let's do that again with so it's nicely printed out. Almost. Let's go a little bit to the left. There we go. There, that's nice. So now what happens if we say episodes dot sort, but pass to the sort function our new, not very good, but our new by title function, our compare function. <gasps> oh my goodness. Let's move this right across to see what happens. Let's do that again. Let's clear the screen. Are you ready? Now, let's just pick apart what we can see here. This part at the bottom is the result of calling the sort function. So the sort function, just like before, because you know how can it sort on anything because we're not really telling it how to sort objects how can you compare one object with another but we can see from the output of console.log that the first two elements of the episodes array that it's passing to the our sort compare uh, to our to our compare function is episode number two's object and episode number one's object it's saying how about these two and then it's then it's passing Episode three with episode two and episode four with episode three and so on. So we know already and we can see it with our eyes that we're getting given in A and B that in A, for example, and this in B the first time around. And then that in A and then this in B second time around and so on. So in the last few minutes, why don't we do this? Const a uh, title, as in the title value, let's, let's call it a title with a capital T so it looks a bit better. A title equals a, which is the object, the first object that's passed to it, which is for example, that thing dot title. And remember, when we're sorting alphabetically, of course, uppercase and lowercase matter. So let's convert just within the by title compare function. Let's convert each one temporarily to uppercase. So the case doesn't come into it when, we, when we're comparing to uppercase. And we're also, Do the same with B. So now we're grabbing the title from the object passed to A and making it all uppercase. And then we're grabbing the title property of the object that's passed to the, in the B parameter, the second one that sort is asking us to compare the first one with. We're converting that to uppercase. And now A title B title, let's just log that out. I know we've got one minute left. We're just gonna go over by a couple of minutes, that's all. 
let's just run that in fact why don't we say down here so we don't have to keep running that down here episodes dot sort by title okay we're not going to get a proper sort order yet but at least we're going to see the values of the a title and b title that we can then compare so i move that across in fact i'm going to move right right across and press run Ooh. fizz buzz and fibonacci setting up for our first challenge solving a fibonacci related challenge fizz buzz and fibonacci so now we're getting titles uppercase titles to compare with each other So that's more like it. Now we can do a real comparison that makes sense. We're going to do something similar to what we did last week on Friday. We're just going to write it a little bit differently because there's lots of different ways of doing this. So why not write it a little bit differently? Instead of having a result, a result variable, let's just use return when we need to. So we say here, well, let's get rid of the console log because that's quite a little bit verbose. Let's just say if a title is less than b title. And don't forget, remember that when we're comparing strings, is apple less than banana? Yes. So that's alphabetically what we want. If a title is less than b title, return. And remember what we have to return if a is less than b. In our, in our mind, by our estimation, we return minus one. And if that happens, then we've left that function, that function's finished, and we go to the next one. But if it's not, then we carry on. So we'll have another if statement. If A title is greater than B title, so remember what we have to return if A is greater than B? How to tell the sort function that's calling us that the first thing it passed to us is greater than the second thing it passed to us by our estimation, which is by looking at the value of the title property, we return one. So either it's less than or either it's greater than, but if we get down to here and it's not returned yet, then obviously they're the same. So we just return zero. Now, In fact, we don't have to have that much space. Let's try that. Are you ready? Let's run it. I think that's worked. F, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, S. And the Fs are sorted correctly because fig comes before fizz and set comes before solve and solving a comes before solving the. So we did it. Well done. So now, hopefully, we can sort of see the benefit of having the ability to influence sort behavior because a lot of times you're not just sorting a list of numbers or a list of strings. You're sorting things that have more structure. And these things that have more structure, now hopefully you're a little bit acquainted with what they can be. The, a combination, any sort of combination of arrays and objects and strings, and numbers. Okay. Thanks so much for joining. That's it for today. Back on Wednesday, same time, half past three in the UK. Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. I'll put the link to this code at home REPL in the normal place, which you can get to by looking at this URL here. And until Wednesday, stay safe, stay at home, keep washing your hands. And I'm really glad you joined. Thanks so much.